today to remember our brother in the Lord, Jack Stewart Sanford Sr. As we do remember Jack and celebrate his life, bear with one another in grace and be a friend in grief. Surround one another with your prayer and love and cherish all that is good and pure and true that lives on in us. As we entrust him to the strong arms of our Heavenly Father, keep him in your hearts and with hope, look forward to meeting him again with all of our Lord's children in our eternal home. All who are God's beloved, hear these words. For everything there is a season, and a time for every matter under heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant, and a time to pluck up what is planted, a time to kill, and a time to heal, a time to break down, and a time to build up, a time to weep, and a time to laugh, a time to mourn, and a time to dance, a time to throw away stones, and a time to gather stones together. A time to embrace, and a time to refrain from embracing, a time to seek, and a time to lose, a time to keep, and a time to throw away, a time to tear, and a time to sow, a time to keep silent, and a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. This is the time to hold Jack in our hearts. In the confidence of our Lord and in the blessing of Jesus in the heart of God. As one people in the Holy Spirit, we claim this time as holy. And we give thanks for God's faithfulness. In the boldness of God's love, we mark this time with our faith using the truth of Psalm 23 from the back of the bulletin. As one people in the Spirit, we are free to pray. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Let us pray, friends. Eternal God, maker of heaven and earth. You formed us from the dust of the earth, and by your breath you gave us life. We glorify you. Jesus Christ, the resurrection and the life, you tasted death for all humanity, and by rising from the grave you opened the way to eternal life. We praise you. Holy Spirit, author and giver of life, you are the comforter of all who sorrow, our sure confidence and everlasting hope. We worship you. To you, O blessed Trinity, be glory and honor forever and ever. Amen. I invite you to join with me now in our first hymn, Just As I Am, number 442 in the hymnal. And if you're able to do so comfortably, please rise. <laughs>
Jesus does welcome us as we are, which is even more important as we stray so often from the ways of God. Yet even in our faithlessness, God is faithful. Let us never take God's goodness, God's faithfulness, or God's grace for granted, friends. Join me now as we pray to the better love of God and our neighbor, using the prayer confession in the bulletin, friends, with one voice, let us pray. Eternal God, you have called us to live holy lives, to love as you love, to forgive as we have been forgiven. Yet we too often choose the lesser life. We defy your love and squander your grace. We waste our gifts and treat others poorly. Forgive our weak and sinful ways. Restore in us our love for your mercy. Renew our minds and hearts in your grace. And hold us faithfully in the desire to do what is right by you and all of your children. Give us your heart for love. In the strong name of Jesus, we reverently pray. Amen. Yes, friends, the power of the gospel, that is the very love of God, our eternal Father, that brought back from the dead our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, now sets us free from sin, from death, and from fear itself that we may now live in perfect freedom, in the fullness of life now and forevermore. In the grace of God through Jesus Christ by the Holy Spirit, know that you are forgiven and be at peace. Let us pray. Eternal God, your love for us is everlasting. You alone can turn the shadow of death into the brightness of the morning light. Help us to turn to you with believing hearts. In the stillness of this hour, speak to us of eternal things, so that hearing the promises in Scripture, we may have hope and be lifted above our distress into the peace of your presence. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. As we remember Jack, I invite Bobby to come forward and share some thoughts. I appreciate everybody coming out today. Thank you. It's funny to think about the things in our life that can make you cry just knowing they existed. <laughs> they become the same thing that make you cry knowing they're gone. <laughs> We're born with some people in our lives and we meet others along the way. All of us are in one of those categories today. And I know Dad appreciates us all being here. People come into our lives to get us from one place to a better place. And I hope we help Jack just do that. We're going to miss him around here a whole bunch. I've struggled a lot to find the words. Even struggled to convince myself that he's gone. My heart's broken. I cry. I grieve. But he'll linger with me forever. My father taught me almost everything. He taught me that was such a humor and to be kind. He taught me how to build and repair things and how to work on a car. But the most important thing, he believed in my dreams and helped me have a ch chance to chase them. He was my hero and my best friend. He spent over 40 years in the military, elevated himself from true poverty. He took up golf and he retired and I played a lot of golf with him and I enjoyed every round of golf with him. Um, truth be told, throughout his entire life here on earth, Year after year, he was simply, predictably thoughtful, endlessly caring, instinctively kind, and more patient than the world deserves. He was everything a father and friend should be. I am better now for who he was. Having him in my life was a privilege and a joy. Faith has left to heal what tears can't touch. I shall always miss him, but to me, Jack is not gone, just out of sight. Since January, February, and all the medical procedures he had to endure in the last few months among us, no matter how many scans or tests they subjected him to, it certainly they never found one mean bone in that man's body. 
There are all kinds of scores to keep in life, and in golf parlance, Jack was a scratch human being. He loved his wife, he was a dad totally devoted to his kids, and he loved his friends. He loved nickel and dime poker, poker with his buddies. Gathered around a poker table, he was so happy. A way of putting past week's bad news to bed, a nudge towards starting the next week with a smile. The stakes were low and the volume was high, and the only real losers were those who somehow managed not to have a laugh during the game. To remember Jack at his place at the table, sitting behind his ever-growing or ever-shorter stack of chips, studying his hand carefully before breaking up a pair of aces, then buying four cards from the dealer so he could try for a royal flush. Draw poker will still be one of my games, but I will never play jacks or better anymore. A better jack is simply unimaginable. Thank you for sharing that, Bobby. Hear this passage from Colossians chapter 3. Therefore, as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience. Bear with one another, and if anyone has a complaint against another, forgive each other. Just as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. Above all, clothe yourselves with love, which binds everything together in perfect harmony. And let the peace of Christ rule in your hearts, to which indeed you are called in one body, and be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, Teach and admonish one another in all wisdom, and with gratitude in your hearts, sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs to God, and whatever you do in word or deed, do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. gifted by God in many ways in body, mind, and spirit. 
He didn't take those gifts for granted, but worked for his improvement and betterment. He did not settle for mediocrity, but sought to excel, and he did. His life of service is one that brought him pride in his own humble way. He was grateful for being able to serve our nation and the community and for what he was able to do and how he was able to carry on. He cared about people, and yes, he was very humble. The best blessing from God, though, that he ever found was Frankie. You did it, Frankie. You were a team. Through all the good and the bad, the ups and the downs, the highs and the lows, for 68 years and then some, in the highs, it's easy to be grateful and to appreciate each other and to celebrate the relationship. It's in the lows that you understand what it really takes to stick it out together, what it takes to keep going on, to, to grow. That's the lows are where life gets real. And you find what love really is capable of doing. We actually need the lows to remind us how much we need each other and how much we need God's help. I'm grateful. I'm grateful that you had each other. I'm grateful that you had your family through all of this, Frankie. You have found true grace in your family in these most recent months in ways that probably surprised you. And you have shared good love through it all. And that's a testament to you and Jack. We are all here today as a testament to God's care and faithfulness also. You are not alone. You are never alone. And you will never be alone. I will never forget my last conversation with Jack. Even though he was wiped by weakness and so caught in the situation of his illness, he was still willing to see me and to have a conversation with me. His message there in the bed was one of love. He knew his time with us was drawing near to a close, but his gospel was still love, love, love. The love filled his face, the grip of his hand, and his message, love for us all. It was so endearing. And so sincere. And that's what drew me to this passage from Colossians. This is the same passage that my wife and I used at our wedding 28 years ago. Not 68, but check with me in 40 years. It's a passage that presents the need to love so openly that it's like wearing clothes. We're decked out in love. It colors our lives and and we relate to other people as people of love. Jack's tenderness, his care, his concern, his compassion, his kindness, all point to this love. Golfers are known for outlandish clothing. And I would like to say that this golfer wore the best clothes. No, Frankie. This is not how you imagined it would go. This is not what you ever imagined or dreamt that your life would necessarily be. But no one knows. No one knows with that kind of foresight. What you have known is a gift. It is the gift of staying together through the end. You were able to tend to Jack at home and to comfort him day and night. And even, through, even though he suffered terribly, he was able to keep himself. He lost his strength, his voice, his health, but he kept those gospel clothes. 
by the grace of God, he continued in love. And he holds us all now in his heart. And for this we give thanks to God. To the glory of God, friends. Amen. Almighty God, in Christ Jesus, you promised many rooms within your house. Give us faith to see beyond touch and sight, some sure sign of your kingdom, and where vision fails to trust in your love, which never fails. Bear our sorrow, lift our spirits, and give us good hope in Brother Jesus, so that we may confidently walk our earthly way and look forward to glad reunion in the life to come. We thank you that for Jack, death is past and pain ended, and that he has now entered the joy you have prepared through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We join again in song, friends, with hymn number 835, Just a Closer Walk with Thee. And again, I invite you to rise if you're able to do so. Uh.
our King into the glory that awaits us all. We continue in that march, that service, that journey through life together, together in Christ and in Jack's memory and as an example as he followed our Lord. As we entrust him to our never failing God, continue with me in prayer. Oh God, you all are only the immortal, the creator and maker of all. We are mortal, formed of the earth, and to earth shall we return. This you ordained when you created us, saying, You are dust, and to dust you shall return. All of us go down to the dust. Yet even at the grave we make our song, Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Give rest, O Christ, your servant, with all of your saints, where there is neither pain nor sorrow nor sign, but life everlasting. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant Jack. Acknowledge, we humbly pray, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a sinner of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. Following the blessing, friends, I invite you to join us in the Fellowship Hall here for a time of refreshment and visiting. Now, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of God's Son, Jesus Christ our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, remain with you all, always. Amen. Amen. Thank you.